Potter Williams. Um, kia ora, Mr Speaker. Uh, firstly, can I um, extend my greetings to this House. It's the first opportunity I've had to speak um, in the new year, so I want to wish Kia ora, and I want to wish everyone um, a successful and robust year um, in the House. And greetings to the new member, um, Maureen Pugh. Uh, welcome to the, to the House. Um, Mr Speaker, I want to um, firstly uh, talk about the role of a home care support worker and some of the changes that have happened that have facilitated um, the, the need for, for this bill and really to signal what may happen in the future in terms of home support. A, a home care support worker does a variety of jo jobs within the home. It's not um, just about uh, preparing meals, um, or um, supporting someone uh, to keep their home clean. It's often very intimate and very personal care that's afforded um, to the recipient uh, um, of, of the home care. And um, it's, it's often... Um, there's a, a definitely a relationship of trust that needs to be developed between the person who delivers the care and the person who receives the care. And often these relationships, um, you know, the recipient of care will do, as um, Jackie Dean has just said, will do what they can to ensure that they are available when their carer is available. Because when they've built that relationship and that trust, it's not an easy thing to then go and give that trust to another carer. Um, what has happened over recent times in the home care um, arena is that through new technologies, new ways of assessing um, the needs for recipients of home care, we've actually got, gotten to a point where uh, carers are delivering shorter and shorter and shorter periods of care, where it may have been, um, say, 10 years ago or six or seven years ago when I was in um, the business of, um, of managing a home care service myself, where you might have had two to three hours a week uh, of care that included perhaps uh, housework, meal preparation and perhaps showering or some personal care. We've now uh, proceeded through a process where um, our, our assessment of the needs for people uh, has meant that they are actually provided with care, with less care in terms of the amount of time that somebody goes into a, uh, a care home. So what that means for a home carer, Mr Speaker, is that they may have more clients. So in an eight hour day or a 10 hour day, they would be traveling say to five or six clients, where in the old days when the assessment would, would be for longer periods uh, of care, they may have had two or three clients. So the need for addressing the issue of travel has become more apparent. Um, yes, we did start thinking about this several years ago and the agreement was, was put in place all those years ago. But I think um, over, the, over the course of um, the next few years, that will again shift and we will, we will need to be thinking again about ensuring that we are, uh, are up to um, date with not only um, the levels of care, but ensuring that home care workers are compensated for um, what they need to do uh, and, and the numbers of clients that they are servicing within a day. So not only uh, is it, uh, do we need to pay for that travel, we're actually paying for more travel and paying for, for home care workers to actually address the needs of more people in one day. Um, uh, Jackie Dean did make the point about the rural community and there is often distance to be travelled, but home care workers often are specialised in a particular type of care, and it's not just rural workers that uh, have, have a higher level of need in terms of the distance that they travel. It may be that because you deliver a specialist type of care, your client base may be far flung across a city environment even. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, others have referred to um, those who uh, submitted uh, to the select committee, and I just want to make a comment about three of the submissions. Um, obviously, the National Council of Women had a concern about the value that we placed on women's work, and um, it is true that we continue to undervalue uh, the, the role of women, uh, and pay equity, pay parity is a very, very uh, topical um, uh, topic at the moment, 
and the National Council of Women are very keen to ensure that we keep this uh, uppermost in our consideration. Um, the National Council of Women also talk about the um, clients living in rural areas, which um, means that travel can be a significant issue. Um, it's m it was my view that before uh, this um, bill, uh, before this settlement, um, and also the discussion around how we pay uh, residential care workers for overnights, that we are in fact um, we have been allowing our home care workers and our residential workers to really subsidise the care for our most vulnerable people. Um, from Access Home Health Care, their submission uh, included um, a, a really interesting um, snapshot of the, the demographic of the workforce. Um, about 91% of the workforce is, uh, are women. Um, and there are wide varieties of ethnicities within that, um, within that workforce. Um, I know it's quite interesting um, uh, when some home care workers are, are from a different ethnicity to the person that they are caring for. Um, it can be quite interesting uh, at times when meal preparation is required because uh, you can often have a wide variety of different ethnic foods depending on um, who is actually delivering your home care. Um, the age profile is really interesting too. It tends to be older women who are part of this workforce. Uh, over the age of 45, from the age of 45 to 64. And I think that does speak to a point that Carmel Cipollone raised about people in this workforce actually wanting to do this work. It is a particularly um, uh, work of a particularly caring nature and um, it does tend to be uh, dominated by women who uh, like to be part of the caring profession. Um, Access uh, also made comment on, um, excuse me, um, they also made comment on the, um, the changing nature of, um, of the home care environment. Um, it's interesting, Mr Speaker, if we were operating a home care service in somewhere like um, Hong Kong or China, travel uh, wouldn't actually be an issue because they, have, um, they live in multi-level apartments and the travel required would only be in the elevator to go up uh, to your next floor, to your next client. Um, with um, home and community health, they talked about the frame of the health sector investment, and I thought it was a really interesting paragraph. Um, the broad context of health sector investment, uh, and I want to quote from their submission, if our workforce can transition away, uh, transition, sorry, towards a place where the workers are paid fairly for the work they do, and are better trained, if provider organisations can be more financially sustainable and therefore more innovative and um, productive, then New, then New Zealand will have a health subsector that can defray more of the rapidly rising cost of other health services. And it's a really, really important um, issue that keeping people well at home costs this country far less than to have those people cared for in an institution. And um, we... Um, this really should be uh, where we think more about um, uh, the investment dollar actually having a cost benefit um, to, to this country. And I, um, I couldn't speak more highly of the support, um, the cost effectiveness of having support at home as opposed to having support uh, in a residential setting. Um, Mr Speaker, just to uh, conclude, um, this uh, bill comes to us really as, as the uh, already negotiated settlement agreement and we know that of that agreement part A um, uh, sets, a, sets about to ensure that people will be paid at least minimum wage for the time um, that they are required to travel. Part B of the settlement, which this bill does not cover, but I think which the Health Select Committee will enjoy um, getting some evidence on at some point, really looks at uh, the regularisation of um, the workforce um, and also the review of the sector, which I think would be quite valuable uh, in terms of um, uh, going forward and determining where the healthcare sector can be in the future. Thank you, Mr Speaker.